What's up everybody? This is Justin here with Alternative Drummer. This is Drum Vlog episode number 26 and I know it's been a long time since the last one but the main reason why I've taken so long is because I was waiting on this. Uh, if you saw my previous two drum vlogs uh, I was working on that kit that's right there behind me. That is my vintage Pearl, uh, 69 Pearl that I converted to electronic using some drum tech triggers and heads and uh, some cymbals that I already had. And then I, I've done some updates since the last uh, video, so I'll walk you through all of those here in a minute um, for those that are interested. Uh, but first, let's open up this package because this is my Lemon 18 inch, wait, 18 inch? Yes, 18 inch three zone ride cymbal that took forever to get here, like a really long time. I, it took way longer than the first lemon that I ordered, but that one was a couple of years ago, and I guess things are just slower now, post-COVID. But I still got here. I got it from Alibaba. Uh, it took about a month and a half, almost two months. It took a while, however long that last video has been. Uh, I ordered it pretty much right at that same time. Oh, wow, pretty good packaging. Big piece of foam on there. What's this? Oh, spin stopper. That's nice that they included that. Though I don't really need it just yet. Oh. All right, let's pull this out of here. Wow, that seems so huge. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I've never had an electronic symbol this large before. It's it's pretty heavy, actually, it's surprisingly heavy. And this one <coughs> is non-branded. You actually have the option on Alibaba, if you're ordering uh, from the company that make from Lemon, uh, you could get one without a logo. And actually, I didn't even realize I was doing that. <laughs> Maybe that's why it took so long. But then after I ordered it, I realized that I had done that. And I was like, ah, cool. Uh, you know, not that I really care if there's a logo on there or not. Um, but this one is Sans logo. So. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and put it on there here in a minute. First off, let's address a couple of things uh, some of you might be wondering. So over here, where there used to be the Simmons SD-1000, it's not there. And then also, actually, sorry, the 2000. Well, originally the 2000 was back here, but then I moved the 2000 over to there. And uh, as you can see, it is not here. So where did it go? Well. You know, as much as I loved the SD2000, Simmons SD2000, I had so many drums. Um, I actually had like nine drum sets or something like ridiculous for a person that lives in New York City. Uh, it's not good to have that many drums. Um, granted, a lot of those drum kits were given to me to review. Um, you know, so it's not like I'm going crazy and buying a ton of drum kits. Well, I kind of am. I've, I've bought several, but. I had so many because not only did I buy a lot, um, some were given to me too. But anyway, to make a long story short, I really love, well, first I got rid of the, the Titan 50. Uh, and I think I had talked about that in the last video. So I got rid of the Titan 50 and then I moved the SD2000 over to there where there's just a bunch of junk right now. Uh, and then I, you know, I set up the Pearl back here, which you can see behind me. And it just, it felt so crap like cluttered in here. And uh, one of my students was actually, his mom was gonna purchase one of my other kits, uh, the Tama Club Jam uh, Mini, or no, the Flyer. But, you know, at the last minute, I was like, you know, I was thinking about that because he wanted wanted it to be electronic, you know, and he's, he's pretty young. He's only like, I think 12 or something like that. And, uh, you know, the, the flyer was kind of like a homemade set, you know, so I didn't really feel great about giving him a set that was kind of, you know, janked together by me, even though it was good, but, you know, there was just a lot more points of failure on something like that. And I was like, well, you know, he's getting bigger too, you know, and the SD2000 is a full size set. And I was just like, why don't you guys take this kit instead? And so they did, uh, but he's, you know, he's really loving it and it's in a good home. So that's really cool. You know, it's not like it went to some stranger or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's where that one went. Um, what else? I sold the Club Jam Mini to another friend, uh, my friend Ben, who plays drums here. He plays in the subway sometimes and does a lot of busking around New York City. 
and I knew it was going to good hands there. And that one, you know, I actually really liked that kit. Um, that one was kind of like the hardest one to sell. Uh, but again, I just have too much stuff, you know. So now I have two. Well, not including the ones that are in my teaching studio, but the one, my personal sets now, I have the Pearl that's behind me and I still have the Club Jam Flyer. I didn't end up getting rid of that one and that one's in my storage unit, but I have triggers on it and Mylar heads. So the next time I play live, I'm, well, actually I might do a video before that. I'll probably do a drum vlog of a hybrid setup of that kit. Cause I don't think I've done that on that one yet. Uh, so that one will probably, probably be coming pretty soon. Um, yeah. It's a lot of drums, but now, like I said, I only have two now, two personal ones. And at the teaching studio, I still have the Simmons SD 1250. And now what I did is I actually upgraded the avatar set that I had there. And I put the Simmons SD 1000 module on there, added my Roland PD 120 snare drum, and then took the old snare and moved it as a fourth tom, and then put my Alisa's three zone ride on that one and basically just turned that one into the SD 1000. And I have that at the teaching studio and I actually set up a really cool setup there with an old computer with Linux on it running Clone Hero. And I'm gonna do a video about that too pretty soon about how to set up Clone Hero and how to use Clone Hero. It's a really, really cool game. Uh, if you're not familiar with, with what it is, it's basically like rock band or what was the other guitar hero, but you can use drums and you can actually use elect like real electronic drums with it and hook it up via MIDI. And then it's really cool. It's like a learning game, you know, it's really a game, but it can totally teach kids how to play the drums. Like I've been using it with my students there and what would have taken, you know, it's basically like melodics. Like I've talked about melodics here too. Um, it has some advantages over melodics, even though melodics has some advantages over clone hero too. But the main advantage of Clone Hero is they are popular songs and it's community driven. So there's a lot of content out there that you can download and it's songs that people know, you know, it's not just like let, you know, either generic songs that are in melodics or, you know, kind of stripped down versions that are in melodics. But the disadvantage, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but the disadvantage of um, Clone Hero compared to melodics is melodics has much more detailed grading, you know, and like opening of hi-hat, closing hi-hats, and like all of these different things that are specific to teaching, whereas Clone Hero is a bit more of a game. But it still gets people playing for like long periods of time, which is really nice. Um, I even helped one of my students set it up at home, and now he's playing at home on Clone Hero because it's free, you know, then he can play like several songs in a row. Because one of the biggest problems I find with children, especially, is just getting them to spend the time. Because there's so many distractions these days of like iPads and iPhones and computers and gaming. And not to mention, most students are in like 8 million other classes. You know, they all take like Taekwondo and dancing and, and you know, various instruments. And they're just, they're spread very thin, children today. But, uh, but it gets them playing longer. I know I went off on a tangent here. It's not really related to the, the drum vlog, but I guess it kind of is. Th these are anything. So um, what I'm gonna do now is put this three zone ride symbol on the Pearl and uh, talk about some of the other stuff I have over there. I made some other upgrades. Well, actually, I'll just talk about that right now. I have the ATV hi-hats on there. I got the 12 inch versions and uh, they are really nice. They work perfectly with my ATV XT3 module. Obviously they should. Um, they feel really good. The only drawback to those, uh, you know, compared to a Roland tie hat is they are louder. Like when you hit them, they're louder in the room. But still, they're, you know, it's not like hitting real hi hats or anything. But it is kind of a, a pretty loud bop when you hit them because they're they're essentially like hollow pieces of plastic because it has the the bottom hi hat as well. Uh, but they're really nice. They feel really good. They're very, like when you're when you're playing and you're like kind of like you know, not really looking. Like you can almost trick yourself into thinking you're playing actual hi-hats on those. They are some of the nicest ones I've ever used. And the reason why I went with 12 instead of 14 is like, I'm fine with 12 inch. I think like, you know, it makes a difference if you're talking about acoustic cymbals, the size of the hi-hat, you know, will sound obviously lower pitched if it's bigger and higher pitched if it's smaller, but you know, electronic hi-hats are fine. 12 inch is totally fine. Um, so anyway, Let's throw that ride on there and then I'll play some drums. So I don't think I ever showed you guys this before. This is actually the original Pearl uh, cymbal mount. Uh, they came with these kits way back in the 60s. 
I didn't get it originally with this set, uh, but I found one on Reverb. Let me show you the, the rest of it there. I found one on Reverb, and then I just put the, the spin stopper uh, just on top of that, and amazingly, I don't really get much crosstalk. You'd think that you would, uh, mounting a cymbal this way. Well, I haven't tried it on this ride yet, but um, I've done this, you know, mounting uh, on the bass drum like this on three different electronic kits. So I think it's pretty safe to say that, that man, that thing looks huge. Is that an 18? That thing looks like a 20 to me. I'm gonna get, get my 20 inch ride. Actually, I have a tape measure. Here's my tape measure. That thing really looks huge. It looks way bigger than eight. Maybe it's just my imagination. Where's my, my tape measure? What did I do with it? Uh, well, I have no idea. Oh, there it is. All right, let's see how big this thing actually is. It's 18. I guess I've just never had an electronic symbol this big. It's like pretty much exactly 18. It's hard to get over the middle. And more like 17 and three fourths, but it's very close. Okay, let's tighten this down. But yeah, it looks huge. <laughs> like really big, really, really big. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Okay. Um, nice. And then I'm going to take my old lemon, my old lemon, and put it over where Crash 2 was, which is, or is. I'm using a tripod on drum vlog, which, oh, why am I not using wide angle? There we go. Um, which I rarely do. But I figured, hey, why not? I just got a new iPhone, and that's what you're looking at. This camera on this thing is great. There's the old lemon, which these symbols are great. You know, I've still yet to have a single problem <laughs> with a lemon symbol. So now I have, I actually have three rides on this set now. I think ride two is the, the one that we want, I think. That over here. Yeah, I mean, these are all actually ride symbols. Um, that's a lemon 16 inch, and over there is a Roland uh, 15 inch ride. And then the lemon 18 inch right there, which looks like a 20 inch to me still. <laughs> it just looks giant. And let's back up here a little bit. Go back to, what, what, I love the wide angle lenses, but they do weird stuff. Like they distort how things look. It still looks distorted to me for some reason. Anyway, let me get back there and uh, try it. And then I'll show you guys some playing. All right, I must have jinxed myself because now I'm getting quite a bit more crosstalk than I used to. But I think really that has to do with this ride just being so much heavier uh, than the 16 inch. And it's just putting more weight down on the bass drum. So naturally more vibrations would travel to the bass drum. And, uh, but it's not a big deal. I actually, it's, I mean, it's not horrible how it is. I could probably play it. 
but I have a bunch more cymbal stands in storage, so I'm just gonna grab another cymbal stand and just put the ride on that. And you might've noticed that I originally put the ride cymbal on backwards before. Uh, when I was doing the video, I wasn't paying attention, and then I went to hit it, and I was like, why is it so soft? And then I noticed that the, you know, the strip that indicates the front was on the other side. So I was like, oh, I gotta turn that around. Um, but, you know, it triggers excellently. I didn't have to change any of the uh, settings in the module. I did run the Crosstalk Wizard again, uh, which is all you can do on the AT ATV module. And uh, it helped a little bit, but it didn't eliminate it completely. So like I said, I'm just gonna get another cymbal stand and put it on there, and then I think we'll be good. But uh, anyway, I guess that's gonna be all for this drum vlog. Uh, it was mostly just an update on the kit about all the drum kits in general. Uh, so I just wanted to update you all on that. But anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you for all the continued support on all of my videos. And I hope I see you all really soon. Have a great day.